Before we talk about variation in ASL, let's review some basic information. There are four features that languages share with other communication systems. Both are composed of symbols. Semaphore flags and the dance of honeybees convey information through symbols. Likewise, languages, whether spoken or signed, also communicate via symbols. Both are systematic. This can be seen in the movement of such signs as word or money, where only the active hand moves. Or in the alternating movement of two-handed signs, such as maybe or drama. Systematic movement is also seen in the honeybee's dance and in the arrangement and signaling of semaphore flags. Symbol forms may be arbitrary or iconic. The form of the ASL sign wrong does not reflect the concept it represents. It's an arbitrary symbol. The sign cat is more iconic since the form resembles a cat's whiskers. Finally, members of a community share the same communication system. Although languages and communication systems share some basic features, languages have additional features which make them unique. Here are some examples. The capacity to introduce new symbols. As technology changes, new signs such as beeper and text pager are added to the lexicon. Symbols have internal structure and can be broken down into smaller parts. Languages also change over time. For example, the two-handed sign telephone has evolved into the one-handed sign we use today and has been modified to reflect the concept of calling via TTY. Languages cannot be learned in isolation. They must be learned from other users. Users of languages can learn other variants of the same language or learn new languages. For example, ASL signers can learn Italian or Japanese sign language. Finally, language users have metalinguistic knowledge which they can use to think about and discuss language. These are some of the features which make languages unique. As mentioned previously, signs can be broken down into smaller parts. ASL signs have five basic parts. Hand shape, location, palm orientation, facial expressions and body movements, known as non-manual signals, and finally, one very important part, movement. Words in spoken languages are composed of sequences of consonants and vowels, arranged in a variety of ways. Likewise, ASL signs are composed of sequences of movements and holds. The sign deaf, for example, begins with a hold at the ear, followed by a movement to and a hold at the chin. Its structure is HMH or hold, movement, hold. In beginning to look at variation in ASL, we can identify variables or alternative ways of signing the same thing. Here are three variations of the sign def. Sign variations within a particular deaf community are a type of sociolinguistic variable. Deaf people in Boston typically produce the sign deaf from the ear to the chin. 
while deaf people in Virginia use a variation moving from the chin to the ear. Phonological variation allows the parts of signs to change. Hand shape changes are seen in these variations of the sign cute. Location changes are seen in these variations of the sign no. Changes in palm orientation are seen in these variations of the sign weak. Variations in the sign help reflect movement changes. Finally, Signs such as deer may be made with one or two hands. Remember that signs are composed of sequences of movements and holds. These holds and movements may be added, deleted, or rearranged. When the signs father and study are produced as a phrase, a movement is added. The syllable white from the older form of the sign snow is often deleted. The first syllable in the sign lose one's temper is likewise often deleted. And as we have seen, the movement in the sign deaf can be rearranged. In addition to phonological variation, we can also see word-sized or lexical variation which affects the whole sign. A good example of this is the variety of signs for pizza. Variation in word-sized units can also be seen at the sentence level. The sentence translated, I think, can also be signed as think without the pronoun. Variation in ASL signs is not arbitrary. Two factors, linguistic and social constraints, help explain the variation. Examples of linguistic constraints include the sign which occurs immediately before or after the variable sign, the grammatical function or part of speech of the variable itself, and the type of discourse in which the variable occurs, such as a conversation, lecture, or story. Social constraints are factors such as region, age, gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and socioeconomic status, the signer's language background, and whether the signer is deafblind or sighted may also affect variation. There are three reasons why the study of sign variation is important. One is the fact that all languages exhibit variation. Another is the value in contrasting variation in spoken and sign languages to see if modality differences exist. And by studying variation, we can begin to understand how languages change. The video clips in this tape are taken from research tapes made in seven different areas of the United States. 207 people representing both men and women, African Americans and Caucasians, young and old, working and middle class, participated in our research. The participants were videotaped in natural conversation, in structured interviews, and were shown a set of pictures and asked to sign what the pictures represented. From the data, we collected examples of different kinds of variation, which you will see throughout this tape. One variable is the sign deaf with three forms, ear to chin, chin to ear, and contact with the cheek. Let's watch some examples from the tapes.
Did you notice the three variations of the sign deaf? These variations are not arbitrary. Grammatical function affected the selection of variants. The ear to chin variation seems to function as a predicate, while the chin to ear variant can function as a noun or an adjective. And the cheek contact variant appears in many compound signs such as deaf culture, deaf way, and deaf institution. Sociolinguistic factors also affected the signer's preferences. Boston signers prefer the ear to chin or citation form of the sign, while older and younger signers in California, Louisiana, Virginia, and Washington State prefer the chin to ear variation. The middle aged signers tend to use the citation form. Another group of signs we selected as variables are signs such as no, for, and why, whose location moves down from the forehead. Let's watch some examples from the tapes. Did you see how the location of signs like no and look for move down? Again, grammatical function affected the selection of variants. Interrogative signs tend to be signed lower, while other parts of speech, nouns, verbs, and adjectives tend to be produced higher. Social constraints also affected the location variants. Four groups, the young, men, Caucasian, and signers from hearing families tend to produce these signs lower. The forehead location, the citation form, is preferred by the middle-aged and older signers, women, African Americans, and signers from deaf families. Signs made with a number one hand shape made up our third variable. Such signs are often made with an L or number five hand shape, Let's watch some examples from the tapes. Did you notice how signs like me could be made with a 1 or an L handshape? Again, these variations are not arbitrary. Looking at grammatical function again, we see the 1 and L variants are used for the first and second person pronouns. The citation form, the number 1 handshape, is preferred for nouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, and such signs as where and the third person pronoun. Other surrounding signs made with one or five hand shapes also affected the selection of variants. Sociolinguistic results show that the middle-aged, working class, and African signers from Massachusetts, California, Kansas, and Louisiana prefer the citation form or the number one handshape. Signers from Maryland, Virginia, and Washington used either the one or L handshape variations. Our data also contained examples of syntactic variation where parts of sentences may vary, such as the sentence I think or think. Let's watch some examples. Did you notice the deletion of the second person pronoun in the sentence, 
second person pronoun, no third person pronoun, and the deletion of the pronoun in the sentence third person pronoun work. There are two reasons for these variations. One is that English influence is a strong factor involving which pronouns are kept. The other reason involves pronominal reference. In the sentence, first person pronoun happy, first person pronoun quit, the second pronoun may be deleted since both refer to the same person. In the sentence, first person pronoun happy, third person pronoun quit, the second pronoun may not be deleted since it refers to a different person. Sociolinguistic results show that older signers and women tend to include pronouns, while middle-aged and younger signers and men are more likely to delete them. As mentioned earlier, we videotaped the participants involved in natural conversations and in structured interviews. The third task involved showing them 34 cards, 26 pictures, and eight fingerspelled words to elicit sign variations. The categories of stimuli included food, animals, new technology, and country signs. Two types of lexical variation appeared in the data. One type included variations of signs that are closely related, such as banana. The base hand uses a number one hand shape, while the active hand can take a variety of hand shapes. The other type included a variety of signs for a concept which were completely different from one another, such as pizza. These are separate variants. Let's watch some examples from the tapes. We found that some signs have many separate variants, while others have only a few. Here are some examples. Early has many variants. Snow varies less widely. After having shown the 34 stimuli to participants in all seven regions, we elicited many variants for the same signs. But for 27 of the 34 stimuli, one variant was shared across all regions. The sign chicken, for example. Although a few variations did appear, the variant produced at the mouth was offered by signers in all regions. We also found that African American signers produced signs that Caucasian signers did not. This two-handed sign chicken was offered only by the African-American signers. Another kind of lexical variation occurs in such signs as rabbit, deer, snow, and tomato. Let's watch some examples from the tapes. Most of us on the research team expected older signers to use two-handed signs such as deer and younger signers to use one-handed forms, or that we would see separate variants for signs like tomato between the groups. But such was not the case. We found examples of younger signers using two-handed signs and both forms of tomato. 
since we found such similarity across younger, middle-aged, and older signers, if there is a change taking place, it is still in progress. We also found variation in the use of the older and newer signs for Japan and Africa. Let's watch some examples from the tapes. We found that the younger and middle-aged signers use the newer signs, while the older signers tended to use the older forms. This workbook and videotape is an introduction to variation in ASL. We make no judgments about right or wrong. We simply describe what we have seen. Just as two individuals have different identities, we do not say one is right and one is wrong. They're simply different. The same is true for the study of variation, which is important because of what it reveals about identity.